Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, I'm going to get piles. Don't worry guys, you do not need to adjust your sets. We have not skipped a whole load of episodes here and got on to interior. I just got a really good deal on these Kirkies and I thought, you know, this is a car that we're trying to build on a budget. Don't let a good used item slip out your fingers. So I've picked up a pair of these because it's it's what this car is going to be all about. Yes, we could have went for fancy seats and all that jazz, but there's going to be no roof and it's just going to be balls out performance. So it's not like I'm going to be doing a lot of commuting in it. Now that they're here, it's going to be a bit of a spoiler if I don't actually reveal I've bought them and try and chuck them in the car. Because as you probably gathered, this is a big unit and these aren't exactly easy to hide. We've bought Kirkies. If they're sitting here, we might as well actually do the fabrication to get them in the car and then I'll probably take them back out and we'll come back to it later because well, they're nice and shiny. That being said, they could be shinier. These are used items as you probably clocked and there's a wee bit of uh, oxidisation going on mainly because they've just been sat in the atmosphere for so long. This will happen to aluminium if you don't clean it and treat it so at some point we'll get these buffed down and looking nice and shiny again. But first of all, we need to work out how to get them in the car. So the first bit of good news is the seats will fit in the gap. That obviously is a big concern when you're building one of these because if you're doing it to the original measurements, you're going to find that it's probably a bit tight in here. Now, the seats are going to have to go in this area here. I'm going to have to make the driver's seat adjustable in this instance. It's not something I feel I particularly need to have because it's really just going to be me that's ever going to drive this. However, to get through an IVA, you've got to have adjustability in the seat so that if anyone else does need to drive the car, they can actually reach the pedals. It's more of a safety thing than anything else. And I'll be honest, I don't really disagree with the logic. So, driver's seat as a minimum must be adjustable. I'm going to try and get something hooked up to make this work. And if it goes easy enough, I'll consider doing the same for the passenger. Yes, there's going to be two Kirkies in here. The other one's just not unwrapped yet. Neither of the books actually give you plans on how to mount seats, so again we're going off piece here and I'm going to try and do this with as minimal metal but maximum safety and strength as I can find. Then we're going to have to think about seat runners. Now, let's have a look at those. Adjustable seat runners isn't a dark car. If anyone's ever put aftermarket seats in their common or garden car, you name it whatever variety, you'll have come across these guys before. These are the cheapest of cheap universal seat adjusters that I could find. I think the total value was 20 quid. Obviously that's still 20 quid off the budget, so I'm only going to buy one. And if it's actually useful, works well, and I can see merit in it, we might get another set and let the passenger have a bit of comfort as well. First thing I want to do though, is make sure that these will actually fit our Kirkies. These Kirkies are surprisingly narrow. I know that there's four holes in the Kirkies already for whatever application. I don't even know if these came with it or if the previous owner has drilled them. Either way, I want to see if I can get the runners through those original holes first. So finding our first hurdle hasn't taken us very long. This is the adjuster bar. Basically you pull this one up and when you pull it up, it unlatches these runners and allows them to slide back and forward. These need to sit in like this. Can you see the problem? That's far too wide for our Kirkies. My next plan is going to be, how do we make this work without this supplied adjuster? As you'll see, there's a couple of dowels here and a couple of holes on this side. When we rest them in and I hold it in place, I pull it up, that acts on that and pulls it off. So this small internal runner needs to attach to the seat. So when you're sat in the seat, you need to pull it up to slide it in and out. So that means that we need to find holes that we can locate this onto the kirky with. Let's establish that before we work out how to deal with this bloody oversized thing. Uh. Well, that's annoying, they're a bit too short, so I'm going to need another hole, basically here. I may as well start drilling. Okay. That idea's not going to work either. We're going to have to put adapters onto the adapters, I think. Let's stop f***ing about. It's a custom-built car. 
There's nothing off the shelf for this. Let's create. Morning. Hello. I see shit's just got serious. Indeed. So um, lots of tools, lots of mess. This is an attempt to clean some of it up a wee bit. And as you'll observe by my tyre, it's lovely and warm today as well. Yeah. Aye. Insert standard, I wish my wife was this dirty. Come on. <laughs> this has got two shelves in it. Base, a shelf and another shelf. I'm going to put the red Halfords kit on top. And just try and bring some order to the chaos that is our unit. If the footsteps weren't enough an indicator, there's there's where I've had to park. Like people who bring sensible cars like Hoggy are alright, but that I've just had to dig out after trying to park there. So aye, it's a winter wonderland. Except the only thing we wonder is When's the sun coming back? I think this is genuinely the only time you're going to point at our family wagon and say that was the sensible car to bring to anything. So I've decided to bring Freddy, the Fiat 500 X. Just just to clarify, he's, he's named it. I, I might have done. You've named it. It's the family car, right? Not, I don't normally name cars. And anyway, there's a reason we named it Freddy. Because it's it, fabulous, darling. It's utterly fabulous, darling. It's inspired <laughs> by the late legend, Freddy Mercury because it does have a wee sort of tashy face at the front and it's fabulous it's a wee tashy face fabulous. and the grill's f***ing massive yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what would be really great today? what? Bovril? aye I think and we, we have none um, aye we're it not only do we not have Bovril that milk's two weeks old I mean it's been in a freezer for all f***ing intents and purposes but I reckon I'm going to be getting on to Scoffable in a minute and putting in a, an order somewhere but will Scoffable bring his milk? no but they or will bring his coffee yeah, anyway, we'll come back in a moment when this is assembled and there's food in their bellies. Yeah. Because, um, short of getting out and skin on a f***ing polar bear, I don't know what we're going to do for them. <laughs> Seventeenth iteration of this car now. So I tried mounting these here quite close into this, right? As you can see by the holes. Unfortunately, that's not going to work because when these were on, the wee springs that stop them from disengaging and going back and forward wouldn't work. Therefore, the seat would constantly be moving back and forward, and that I don't think is useful. So we're going to go with the actual width these should be now. Uh, I've welded all this up and I'm like, right, cool, that'll work. Uh, I'm not going to take this off and make sure it fits in the f***ing hole. Because I've just realised, oh, that's wide, the hole's not. So we're going to have to just double check that once this bolts up, it still goes in the gap that's made for it. I was going to do some funky little uh, angles, as you can see by the cuts I made in this, to make this come out from here. Again, it's not going to work because when the bar's in, it won't move because it fails in that. I'm not going to run a bar across here either, as you can see, because if I run a centre crotch harness, hello, uh, it's going to block that. So, uh, I don't know actually what I'm going to do here. I'm probably just going to run a couple of wee things out and gusset it so it doesn't flop around. I think that's our food. 
Oh, I hope so. I am hungry. We haven't eaten in days. many, many hours. And if that's the food, mint. I doubt it. Well, we'll have a look. Yep. Nope. Must have been an avalanche instead. In the mechanical holder department, we have, I've got shit on it already, but we have an assembled chest of tooling holdings. Let me lift this stupid box of Focus ST parts that I'm going to have out there. Tommy did highlight something interesting. It's hard to make building a tool. What is this even called? To a trolley. trolley. A trolley. It's hard to make building a trolley interesting, but you'll notice that the rest of the shelves have this kind of lip to stop stuff coming out. The top should have that as well, but Tommy suggested that I put it upside down for the reason that it gets dust and shit trapped in it, but there's another very good reason. I am going to be putting this Halford's chest on top of it in the drawer, wouldn't clear here. So have a think about such things when you're assembling your brand new, freshly imported from China. Yeah, um, yeah. chest. Uh, it did slightly bend, unfortunately, because I put it on the wrong way. But it's the right way. So it's fine! I'm starting to develop some form of cohesive plan for this. I'm going to put these guys in, like that, and you'll notice that these holes are different sizes, right? Now I've done the same with this and I've really spoken about it, but if you put a bolt through this, you'll see that there's not really a lot of meat in between that. And if you clamp them up, a square is not as strong as a triangle or a tube. So it will actually start compressing that tube and distort it. Uh, especially being the wall thickness it is, it's just not, not strong enough um, and it's going to be my, literally my arse on the line so I would like a bit more strength in that so what we're going to do this is just a length of cold rolled steel which is we touched on earlier on, the perfect width for this and I've drilled a first hole which is the perfect size for this bolt which will make it go through like that and then the second hole, 12mm wide accepts that and that as you'll see gives us reinforcement through the tube. And all I'm going to do is weld up the other side and then put a cap that's not on it. So we don't need to worry about getting a spanner on the wrong, we'll take the seat in and out. Keep it all nice and level, and then just run our welder across it. And that, if you cue the montage music, looks a bit like this. It sounds like work is proceeding apace. Don't let noises fool you, but we're getting, we're making progress, which is main thing. You can't see the steel tube, but there's a steel tube running through. Basically this guy. Which is very cool. This stuff too. So, now that we've tacked this in place on the chair, I'm going to take it off the chair, so I don't f*** the chair, and we can then do the rest of it on the bench. I'll put some proper welds on it. We all love the sparkly stick, don't we? No likey! No likey! I'm having one of those days, boys, where everything I do, um, I immediately forget where I've put things. Um, for example, uh, this, I couldn't remember. And then the piece I've been working on, I can't remember. And then when I'm drawing it, I don't remember where I put the chuck for the I drill. don't even know where I am. I, I don't even know what year it is. Right in the wrong year. I'm like still wishing it was 2019. I'm still wishing I was five. 
It just gets worse every f***ing year. Every year it's just... I mean, we're in, we're in, I'm in my late 30s now, obviously, so... We did actually speak to a man this morning who, it was his 40th birthday, nah. recently, and you could see the sadness. You can see, you could just see all life has left him. Mm -hmm. All joy has been drained from his life. Mm -hmm. So that'd be me next year. Is it the next year, has next it? Next year, <sighs> Joy. Remember when I thought it was going to be put the spars on first? <laughs> Slim. Seats in, so it's now time for tryouts. Starting with, I'm not a small man. The f***ing mountain. Place bets in the comments now. <laughs> <coughs> that is not comfortable. <coughs> get, get yourself right up to the hill. Get the arse in as far as it'll go. I see my hips. Ah. <laughs> and this. Is agony. I won't be going far on this. But you'll get in for a track day. Um, I mean, crucially... Maybe, maybe if, if I really start taking Slimming World seriously and when is that go ever? running and stop eating burgers at lunchtime. What will maybe do then? Oh, that is not pleasant. If we might need to build a f***ing mechanical hold or adaptability seat because Whew. this is where the genius comes in. And if do I'm, you want to know what the problem is as well? I'll give you this. Like, I don't think there's any amount of weight loss for me that's going to solve this. It was my rib cage it was digging into. Uh, you're just a That's the problem. Oh, that was not comfortable, ladies so, and gentlemen. What we can do, and um, everything on this car is all about the versatility, is quick release. Observe. <laughs> Just like that. Captive nuts, welded in the bottom. And I can just what, sit in the seat frame. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing about Kirkies is they do come in different sizes. Now, mm. I got these off the shelf, it's just A and generic. Kirkies. Normal human size. If, if you look they're for not, the. I don't even think they're normal human. <laughs> in fact, let's actually look at this. If you look for the mechanical hold size. I wonder what they actually say here. I mean, it's a 15 and a half. I don't know if they get like 17s or what. Look on the bright side, the chassis didn't bend when I sat on it either. Uh, yeah. And also considering it's not fully welded yet, I'm mm -hmm. also really relieved at that. It's just snug for you, mate. It's like perfect. it couldn't be any more perfect. I wouldn't want to commute in it, but... I mean, they're at it. They're comfortable. The gears, are, gears are there. We'll have a steering wheel somewhere. What about here? Oh, and if it's too close. Oh, that's nice. Isn't it? That goes a lot further back than I thought it did. Not that, not that the, the actual distance is the problem for no. you, but you know. Well, it would have been had I got in the seat. Aye. Full, full of just play. I mean, if I put it back, I'm, you can tell it was built with, you know, for you to get in the back rather than for me because. Right. You know, <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Uh huh. Right, okay, so thanks for watching. Kirk in. Um, I tell you what, I'll do this where, you know, we flashing in another one appears on the second side. In fact, no, nah, we won't even bother. I can't be asked for that. But that's how you fit Kirkies into your car. In the next episode, we will start looking at the driving position. So, we'll need to get the steering rack in, as we discussed, so I can work out the steering position. But before that, there's something else I want to get to. And uh, tune in next week to see what I mean. Thanks for watching guys, all the Patreons, thanks for doing all that stuff, really appreciate the support. If you haven't, patreon.com slash tools and track, like, subscribe, do the bell thing, all that <laughs> Why is it? Aye, the bell thing gives you notifications, doesn't it? I don't know mate. I don't know. Well, if you can see it, press it, and we will see you next week. So, how are you guys? Any, any interesting stories? Well that's right, no, there's no interesting stories because Covid and nothing ever happens. Life is
But at least you get to come on this channel every week and see us not moan about COVID and bring a bit of joy into your life. And on the subject of joy into your life, yes, I know it's a mess, but it's spilt and there's stuff on it, stuff in it. So the side episode of this saga has concluded, but I think I've got some tidying to do. <laughs> Isn't this after engine train? Uh, yes. Cleanliness is important. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. This place is... Oh. Rip fuel.